In this video, I'm gonna demonstrate a flutter echo using virtual reality. So let's get to it. Let's get inside the headset. There we have it. This is a classroom in a school. So it looks like this. And in this room, you have two walls. Here's a pointer. Here's one wall and here's the other one behind me. And these are now acoustically not treated. It's just a hard surface on these walls. So what happens when, if you, let's, this is a classroom, and if you're a teacher and you're standing here in this, this end of the room, and you're talking, let's, let's stand up, maybe I'm not, oh, I w walked inside the wall, don't do that. <laughs> here, I'm, I'm having a lecture, my students are sitting here and I'm, I'm talking. Now what will happen when you have an undamped wall here on the other side, and I speak? The sound will be reflected in that wall and you will bam get it right back on onto you and the sound is is traveling by 343 meters per second so it's it's pretty fast it's just bam like this but it's going to be a little time delay so if you're standing here and you clap your hands it will sound like papa when the reflection comes back but it doesn't end there because this side is also hard and that means that the reflections will keep going so it's going to be like this. Now I have up, up to four reflections, but here I can demonstrate. So when I speak, it will be like brr, brr, like this. Every, every sound impulse will travel there and bounce back and forth between these surfaces. And it's, it will lose a little bit of energy every time it bounces inside in the wall because it's, it's not infinitely hard, this. If this would be a flat concrete surface, you would get a lot of reflected energy back. Whereas if this would be a, a soft surface you could eliminate this so let's show what happens we'll let's say we create a sound absorber on the opposite side here so we'll paint something on that surface uh, we put a wall absorber here like some 50 millimeter thick mineral wool like material there we have it now what will happen if you have it like this and 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 then you talk and you're standing here you will get the flutter echo here and then you just move ever so slightly to the to the left and the flutter echo is gone so not, nothing here but as soon as you go to the side of the absorber you will get it and this means that you can have local flutter areas flutter echoes in the room where you're just standing and then you take a little little bit movement to each side and it's gone whereas if you're standing just here you will get it and this is something that i've i've uh, discovered as an acoustician that I'm, I'm i'm thinking like it's it's a kind of ray tracing a mental ray tracing when you're walking in a room and you're thinking about okay where where does the reflections go when when you're talking and and that means that sometimes you can hear strange sounds like this coming coming back at you and uh this can be very, very annoying if you get these kinds of, of flutter echoes. And they can be a problem, especially if you have long rooms. So, so there's, they will be stretched out in time, this one. So it's going to be... Or actually, you, you will hear them <laughs> regardless of the room size. Uh, one, one kind of room where I've really experienced this kind is when you go into... a certain hotel rooms because there you usually have perhaps a, a, a soft carpet on the floor and you got a big bed and then you have two parallel surfaces inside the hotel room where the, the sound is just bouncing like crazy here and it's going to be very intense it sounds like that if you have a flutter echo and you clap your hands it's going to be super easy to hear it and also now i'm standing here towards one of the sh edges of the room so if I'm standing here in the middle of the room it's gonna sound different but but if I go to the side of the room here and, and I clap my hands then the flutter echo will be more pronounced because now now it's, it's the time between each each time we're hit by the sound wave is it's a longer time but but when we're standing in the middle it's they they're coming more intensely because now it doesn't travel as far. The, the travel path here is half the room length. Whereas if you're standing here, it has to... Oh, oh I almost lost it. <laughs> it has to travel the whole room length. And that means it takes longer time for the sound. 
if, if, if you take it like this and then you you grab it and you you fold it out let's see the whoa not that big that was too large I'm not that comfortable with this one yet but if you have two walls inside a room like this and then you're standing here on the side it's gonna it has to travel oh there all the way there and back and this one you could like fold it out and that means that the, the total distance traveled will be actually that far whereas if you're standing in the middle of the room here and then it, the sound travels bam and then it's back to you and if you fold this one out that's the distance you see it's, it's half the distance and that means you're gonna get hit by the sound wave a lot more often in the middle whereas if you're standing here it will take longer time between each bounce and that can make the flutter echo even more pronounced yeah this was just an experiment I I'm not sure if I'm even in the picture now. <laughs> I've actually I've never recorded virtual reality before so so it's a, a bit of a test this video as well to see if it works but I, it seems to be working quite quite nicely and uh, I think this can also be a very powerful pedagogical tool to visualize sound and uh, explain different acoustic phenomena so yeah, style tip as well, I guess. In today's video, I'm wearing a, a headset, which is <laughs> probably looks crazy. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you should. Maybe you should pair it with a black belt instead to get some color matching. <laughs> Anyways, see you later.